Melbourne, or you found something in, in the documents. Yeah, Katie, one of the big questions here has always been, okay, are we going to get a readout of everything that we watched in those hearings? And prosecutors do that too, a summary, or are we going to get new information today? Well, I can tell you we have new information, the kind of stuff that would be breaking news, blockbuster, front page stories, if it were a story, it's just coming from the government itself. I'm holding the, uh, according to the uh, Intelligence Committee's report, I'm holding newly released call logs of Rudy Giuliani in August with the White House, and interestingly, Katie, with the Office of Management and Budget. What does Rudy Giuliani, the personal attorney uh, for the President of the United States, need to do with the Office of Management and Budget? Well, that goes to one of the central questions in this entire uh, alleged plot, which is, was Rudy Giuliani illicitly involved in extorting a favor from the Ukrainians? Why would he have any contact with OMB? And, and when you say OMB, I think about Bill Taylor having yeah. that video link conference call uh, about the security aid and, and saying that there was somebody from OMB in the room off camera who said, we've been told uh, by the chief of staff who was told by the president to withhold the security aid. Why would Rudy Giuliani, who is not a member of the government, is the president's personal attorney? Attorney, Is there any legitimate reason for him to be on the phone with an OMB official? Well, I think you're asking exactly the right question. He doesn't have lines of authority. The OMB is the White House office that deals with government matters of a highly sensitive nature. We're talking about hundreds of million dollars in military aid. And you're talking about Rudy Giuliani making these calls. And reading again here from this report, this is new breaking news that we have from, from the Intelligence Committee. They describe how in mid-afternoon, someone using a telephone number associated with the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget, called Mr. Giuliani. A call lasting for nearly 13 minutes. And then it also details, again, in this newly released material, uh, each time Rudy Giuliani texted or called people in the White House or at OMB. Um, in fact, I'll put both these up for viewers. Sometimes the news is breaking so fast we haven't turned this uh, into easier to use graphics, um, but it's pretty hot stuff, including uh, what is suggested to be potentially a call from someone important in the White House or potentially the president himself. Uh, it comes from a number uh, that says just digit one, meaning it's an obviously unidentified number. But according to the call records that the uh, committee has obtained, they're showing that late in the night you had a four minute call with Rudy Giuliani, plus you have him calling the White House uh, switchboard, plus you have these attempted calls coming from, again, an unidentified number. Well, that doesn't mean, Katie, uh, and for our viewers, it doesn't mean that the the House Intelligence Committee is saying this was the president uh, or, or naming it. What they're saying, and this goes back to the point we discussed earlier, is number one, uh, the White House and the president have basically obstructed and defied any request to get to the bottom of this. If there's an innocent explanation, they're not providing it. And number two, Mr. Giuliani, who stands in the center of this alleged plot, is also having uh, these seemingly abnormal contacts with the budget office uh, at the center of the plot, Katie. So th this is a pretty striking new stuff. There's more than 15 calls, and we're just looking, just if we're looking, this is page 116, if you're following at home, um, in the report. This is August 8th, 2019, and we're seeing 16, 17, I mean, oh, it looks like 20, above 20 calls between Rudy Giuliani and the White House, or Rudy Giuliani and OMB, and some of them are text messages. When you're looking at the OMB stuff, if you look right before that, there's a text message between Rudy Giuliani and a White House number at, at 2-21-13, 14-21-13. An hour later, there's a call with OMB that lasts tw 12 minutes and 56 seconds, OMB to Rudy Giuliani. There's a couple of um, zero-time calls from Rudy Giuliani to a, uh, the OMB number. Maybe that was a, a pocket dial or a butt dial. And then at, at 15.57, this is 3.57, it's, um, uh, you know, 40-odd minutes past the call with the OMB number, there's a... 22-second call with the White House switchboard, a 17-second call right. a couple hours what's, later. It seems like he's trying to get a hold of somebody and it is not being put through right. with and the duration of these calls. What's important here is this adds to the evidence that people saw in those public hearings because this is all happening. This, this log that we've been talking about is August 8th. On August 9th, we know from public text messages that, that became public, uh, and I'm reading again from this new report, you have Sondland saying uh, POTUS wants a deliverable. On August 9th, you have Ambassador Volker, who was involved in these same discussions, saying uh, we've consulted with everyone, quote, including Rudy, let's all get back on the phone. So what's new here, we knew there was a lot of plotting going on. What's new is not only is Rudy Giuliani in the center of this plot, we knew that, but Rudy Giuliani is having what sounds like lengthy, substantive type conversations with the budget office, and a day later, these so-called three amigos and these other individuals are meeting up and saying, Rudy's in the loop, the budget's in the loop, and according to this report, and again, the president will have his replies, but the report is alleging, quote, quid pro quo in yeah. this section. Can you make a sound and convincing case 
without hearing directly from Rudy Giuliani? Yes. I mean, I think what, I'll give you two answers to that. What this report in the Intelligence Committee Democrats are saying is we have heard from Rudy Giuliani. We have the call logs. We have incriminating texts. We have multiple people putting him at the scene of what they say may be a, quote, high crime, the scene of the high crime of the abuse of the office of the presidency, and you have him speaking out in public. Uh, the other thing I've noticed reading through this report that's different from past times, uh, past uh, administrations, there's a lot of references in here to Fox News, to John Solomon in the Hill, to the president's Democrats say, the Democrats say his incriminating phone calls and interviews with Fox News. So the, the notion that these people haven't been heard from at all, which is something that they've said in defense, doesn't always wash because they've been heard from in public. They just won't go under oath. The people who have gone under oath, like Mr. Sondland, um, have largely corroborated the negative accounts, the quid pro quo account. And so I think what this does, I mean, to, to broaden out here again, if it's not just call records, uh, as I do show and tell, what this report does as 300 plus pages is say to the White House, we see your defiance and your bluffs. Here's the actual story. Do you care to respond? We have Judiciary Committee hearings coming up. Do Seems you care like to address it? They don't care to respond, though. Uh, thus far, not in a setting that puts pressure on them. So there's a lot of bluff and bluster in tweets. Uh, is, but is but I think the question... Having to, is it because part of it is having to go sit under oath and make these arguments that they're making on Twitter, on Fox News, um, to individual reporters? It's a lot easier to do it there. There are a lot less consequences doing it there yep. than they are than they, than they they would have if they sat under oath in front of a congressional committee. Yeah, well, Katie, you don't need a law degree to know that it is legal to be wrong on Twitter. Uh, it is legal to lie on the internet. It's legal to lie to for the most part. As Corey Lewandowski yeah. bragged about in a congressional committee. Our hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.